Batches, auto-generating a library of class diagrams. Creating a batch file. We saw earlier how a class diagram can be created pre-populated from a set of related classes. We also saw how, starting from any one class, more related classes can be added such as field types, dependencies, subclasses or superclasses. But not every class diagram you make this way shows you anything meaningful. For example, a class diagram made by inheritance which shows only two classes, the starting class and object as its one and only superclass, that doesn't tell anybody anything. The point of batch driven generators is that they do the hard work of figuring out which class diagrams are worth creating. The generators search through the project looking for groups of classes which would comprise a meaningful class diagram. Batch files have the extension .ajb. The way it works is you create a batch file once and rerun the batch as often as you like in order to bring the library up to date with the code. This is about as agile as software visualization realistically can be. So let's dive straight in and make a batch file. Right click on the class diagrams folder which we made back in part three. Select Agile J new batch. You could just click finish at this point and you'd create and run a batch made with the default settings. But as this is a tutorial, let's learn by playing with a few of the settings along the way. Firstly, it's asking which projects to include in the batch. In this case, it's simple because there only is one project. If you have multiple projects open in your workspace, then this is the time to deselect any you don't want to include. Uncheck Remote Systems Temp Files. Click Next. Now we're being asked to configure what's called the By Package Generator. By Package just makes a class diagram for each package found in the projects. Each class diagram is created with its filter script initialized as shown. It's not the case with the Commons Codec project, but let's suppose for a minute we are thinking of splitting up some of the larger packages and we really need to get a feel for the number of interdependencies. In that case, we need to see the dependency lines. Comment out, hide dependency lines. Click Next. The next page looks fairly similar to the previous. Now we're setting up something called the By Inheritance Generator. There are two filters. This is because all generation happens in two steps. The first step is to gather what we call seed types, types as in classes, interfaces, enums or annotations. The seed is just the starting type. The second step is to gather what we call population types, the population being the other classes on the class diagram apart from the seed. The population in this case is the subtypes and supertypes of the seed. By default, this is set to non Java star package types. In other words, avoid all the usual java.lang and java.util classes. This keeps the class diagrams clean of java.lang.object and java.io.serializable and other boilerplate types like that which, if you let them, will clutter up every class diagram. Let's turn off the restriction in this case just to see what happens. Click the Choose button next to Population Filter. Select All Types. Click Next. Again, we have a similar looking page. This time it's the turn of the By Composition Generator. Let's just disable this generator completely. Click the checkbox Disable Create By Composition. Click Next. We have one last generator, which is the by dependency generator. This time, let's restrict the seed types a bit. Let's say we're only interested in the dependencies of the org Apache Commons codec language package. Click the choose button next to the seed filter. Select types declared in a package named. In the package name pattern field, enter org Apache Commons codec language. Click OK. Let's also highlight the seed classes. And to do that, we need to change the filter script. Insert a new line, show types declared in a package named org Apache Commons codec language in orange. 
Remember it's first match wins, so that new line has to go above the other lines starting with the word show. Click next. This page is just confirming the output location. Click next. This page is just warning you that you will probably have a busy IDE for some time while the batch runs. Uncheck the run immediately option. We want to just save this batch file and explore the different ways of running it. Click finish. So now there's a new folder called batch under the class diagrams folder. Inside that folder is a file called batch.ajb. Running a batch file in the IDE. When running a batch, there are essentially two decisions to make. The first is, shall I run the batch in the Eclipse IDE or shall I run it on the command line? The second decision is, shall I run it from scratch or shall I run it incrementally and preserve any existing output? For the first decision, let's run the batch within the IDE this time. Right click on the batch file. For the second decision, well, it doesn't make any difference the first time around, so we'll just run it clean. Select Agile J rerun brackets clean. The status line shows the progress of the batch and the console lists updates as it progresses. The batch runs in three main phases. The first phase assembles groups of classes, and I'm talking now about where a group will potentially form a class diagram. In each case, a group is assembled by looking for qualifying seeds and using the generators to find qualifying related classes. It removes duplicate groups and groups which are too large or too small. The second phase creates a .ajsv file for each group and auto arranges the classes. As each .ajsv file is created, a link to open it is added to the console output, which you can click on if you want to, to see the class diagram. The third phase builds an index of everything in the library. When the batch run is finished, the output is written to a war folder, which is a sibling of the batch file, the .ajb file. The class diagram files are created in the path war slash data slash diagrams. They are also listed in the AgileJ index view. Each generated .ajsv file has a prefix de underscore in underscore co underscore or pa underscore followed by the seed name. When the batch run is finished, a message box says batch run finished. Let's have a quick look through the results. In the console, click on org Apache Commons codec binary .ajsv. This class diagram contains dependency lines. We can see straight away it would take some work to split up this package. Open the filter script. As you can see, hide dependency lines is commented out as we requested when we made the batch. In the console, click on PA org Apache Commons codec net .ajsv. It's a different story with this package. There are no dependencies between the classes so we could split it if we wanted to. Preserving existing class diagrams. There are a couple of reasons why you might not want to run a batch from scratch. One, the batch may have been interrupted. Or two, the batch may contain manually edited class diagrams. Yes, you are free to manually edit the class diagrams, then rerun the batch in preserve mode. If nothing has changed in the source code, then it will just rebuild the index. To rerun an existing batch in the IDE without cleaning, right click on the .ajb file and select Run, Resume, Preserve. It will still generate any new class diagrams for new code which fit the criteria, and in all cases, the content of each class diagram will match the current state of the code. That's it for running a batch in the IDE. If you want to terminate a running batch, select Windows, Show View, Progress. Click the red box to the right of Agile J Batch Generation. Running a batch on the command line. If you want to free up your IDE from running batches and include the generation of a class diagram library in your automated build, then you can use the command line. Java to start the VM, minus jar, path to the jar file which runs Eclipse headless, the Equinox launcher, minus application, 
batch generation, minus data, path to the workspace, minus AJB, path to the .ajb file relative to the root of the workspace. By default, this command tears down the old WAR file and starts batch generation from scratch. If you don't want the batch to run from scratch, then there is a minus preserve option, which will build around any existing class diagrams it finds in the WAR data diagrams folder before indexing the whole lot. If you have a large project, you may find you need to bump up the heap. Append minus VM args minus XMX 1024M. The output on the command line is similar to that of the console when running in the IDE. As there is no job progress indicator, then the percentage progress is provided with each update. Obviously, there are no clickable links to .ajsv files on the command line. The output confirms successful completion of the batch and the location of the WAR file. Publishing the results of a batch run. To publish the results, you need a web container such as Apache Tomcat, Jetty, JBoss Application Server, Glassfish, any one of them anyway. We will use Tomcat. Yet another link has been provided to download Apache Tomcat. Unzip Tomcat, cd2 tomcat slash bin. Make it runnable if you're on Unix, chmod plus x startup.sh. Dot slash startup.sh. Point a browser at port 8080 and you'll see the Tomcat default home page. A completed batch run outputs a WAR file in a time stamped folder. Copy your WAR file to the Tomcat web apps folder. Point your browser at localhost 8080 forward slash agile j class diagrams. And that's it. The result is a GWT built HTML5 application which gives a close equivalence to browsing class diagrams in the Eclipse IDE. It zooms with the mouse wheel or the toolbar buttons just as in Eclipse. The selection of classes, multiple selection for top level, single selection for everything else, works just as in Eclipse. You can iterate through classes just as in Eclipse. You can hover to highlight lines and you can navigate along lines just as in Eclipse. Auto arrange has the same improve and from scratch modes, just as in Eclipse. There is an overview with a draggable box, just as in Eclipse. And you can also collapse the overview or the whole toolbar if you need maximum space to view the class diagram. There is an incremental find, again, just as in Eclipse. And best of all, even the filter script works with error highlighting and code completion, just as in Eclipse. That's a lot of class diagrams you can publish easily and which the audience can engage with interactively, all without them needing to install any software. And that concludes part seven, batch generation of class diagrams and web publishing. Over in part eight, We'll look at how to recognize your own one-to-many containers and how to build your own filters. <laughs>